Hello and welcome to another episode of West Underground, the biggest, baddest podcast in the West, guys. And make sure you like and subscribe, murder that subscribe button, please. Now, we have a brilliant interview today with Katanak, a great Australian artist from up north. Um, but when we were doing this interview, I made a bit of a mistake and the Zoom was only focused on me for the first four minutes. But don't worry, you stick it through those four minutes and you will get visuals of Paul and Katanak. So don't worry, guys, it resolves itself and you get to see the rest of the interview um, with Paul and Katanak in the flesh. Anyway, Paul, take it away. Hey, guys, welcome to West Underground. We got Katanak here um, interviewing on Zoom. And the first question is, um, where do you start on your music? Where do I start on my music? Um, I started writing music about, <clears throat> let's, how old am I? 25. I started writing music about, honestly, nine or 10 years ago. Um, you know, it wasn't fantastic. Um, that's when I really started getting into it. Um, it started through my high school, actually, because I initially was just a recording engineer. You know, I was just recording my mates at school because, you know, I didn't think I was good enough. And my principal came to me one day and he's like, hey, do you want to write a song for, um, you know, a fundraiser that the school is doing? So I went to music industry college. So, you know, it was all music based. And he just goes, do you want to write a song? Chuck it on the, the school's album for the fundraiser. And I was like, you know, well, why not? You know, it's just a fundraiser. I got really nothing to lose there. So I kind of I spent a couple of weeks, you know, writing and recording a song uh, that was called Each Other's Cure. It was um. It's never going to be released ever, so don't try looking for it. But um, it was it was pretty cool, you know. It was it was good for like what seventeen, not even sixteen. So I was you know pretty happy with it. Put it on the album, and from that point on, I just loved every moment of writing and recording that song, and I just wanted to get into it. So you know, fast forward many many years, I've been through several bands before I came to Catnac. Um, you know, long story short, I kind of, you know, went through a long time of being not confident that I could be the front man of a pop band. Um, um, and, you know, a couple of years ago, I just went, nah, stop it. I've, I've got to do this because, you know, if you never do it, you'll never know. So um, I, I started Catnac and here we are. And I'm really happy with everything that's going on with it. I really, really love all the music that I'm writing. Um, and you know, the response to all my music is fantastic. And I, I just like the style that I'm writing in. And I, I will say that with like quotation marks because I don't really have one style. I write whatever I want to write. And I really like that aspect of my band. Yeah. I think that was interesting. Like when, you know, going down like your rabbit hole and, you know, doing a bit of like, you know, research on you, I was kind of like, this is, this is really interesting. Cause like you're your your latest like single was you know kind of like a you know like a like a rock you know rock punk kind of punk song and then going down like your catalog you know there's a little bits of like electronic elements in other tracks and then there's a little bit of country in some other tracks and I was like this is interesting it's like it, it's not, it doesn't seem to be locked into one place which was really cool I you know a lot of people it's pretty divided on that. A lot of people would say, oh, you can't do that because, you know, how will your fans, how are you going to get any fans? Because, you know, they, they, if, if the music's different, you know, they might only like one song and not like the others. And I'm, But from my point of view, if I was listening to this artist, it's so interesting to have every song be different. And, you know, it's saying that my songs aren't, you know, when when you put them into a genre, sure, you can go, oh, that one's indie pop, oh, that one's electronica. Like, how do you correlate those together? But when you listen to the songs, it becomes clear that it still sounds like me, it still sounds like Cadillac. It's yeah. just got different, uh, a different kind of style to each song, even though you can definitely pick that it's me that wrote, sung, recorded, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like, I, I'm not, I think, I think it's a good thing, man. It shows that you're versatile and the best. Like, I don't know who your favorite artists are, but you know, like my fa favorite artists for sure. Like, um, are, you know, experimented with different sounds and different things. And like, I think when you, you know, when you look back on an artist that you like, 
you know, you kind of, there's, there's different, you know, different periods or different little bits that, that, that you grow to love. Yeah. Like you might not like it straight away, but you're like, Oh, I, I see what he's doing. You know? Yeah. There was a lot in, in a lot of my favorite bands, like uh, the 1975 has been my favorite for a very long time. You know, five seconds of summer coming second. This is, this is just in the pop category because, you know, it, metal and all these other genres that I really love as well, you know, I have favorites for those, but in, in the pop world, in the catnap world, um, you know, five seconds of summer and uh, the 1975 are like my big uh, kind of inspirations vocally and, you know, songwriting wise. And those guys, you can hear that a lot of their songs sound like them, even if they're a little bit different. And you can also definitely hear the phases that they went through. And I did have like a period of time where, you know, a new song comes out and you're like, do I like that? And then you give it a couple more listens and you're like, yeah, this is fantastic. Yeah. I, I I agree, but I you know when you said uh, you know five seconds of summer and like the nineteen seventy five, uh, I when I listened to your last song, I thought, it, have you heard of the artist at the moment? Is he goes by the name of Youngblood from the UK? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I was I you know I thought I wonder if he's taken any inspiration from you know Youngblood by any chance? I was about no, to one of the I, questions. I, I listened to listen to a bit of his stuff. Um, mainly live actually, not really recorded uh, on Spotify, but I've listened to a lot of his live stuff, but I took no inspiration from it actually. Like it's been a little while since I've listened to him do his stuff. Normally I have an artist that inspired what I've written, but for Pinch Grip, I just, there was, there was no one that really inspired the choice of style for that song. I just felt like that's what it should be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when anyone goes, oh, what inspired this song? I'm like, I don't know. I really have no idea what inspired this song. You know, lyrically I do, but um, the instrumental, I've got no idea what inspired it. I just felt that's what it should be. Yeah. Well, dude, that's a great fucking song. Like I have to say, like, you know, <laughs> I was saying to you before we started the interview, you know, when you, when you, um, you know, like reached out to us, um, you know, and then I listened to your music. I was like, holy fuck. Like we have to have this guy on. This is, this is, this is brilliant, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, and then, you know, I was then, you know, doing a bit of research on you. I was like, what the fuck are you doing in Queensland? You know, well, it's good for at the moment, but you know, yeah. He, he, you know, I just, I just thought the quality of your music so high, man. Like that's, that's the, that's the thing that, and, you know, going back through your, your catalog, even from the start, it doesn't feel like there's duds, you know what I mean? Like, you know, the production's high, the quality of like melodies are high. You know, I, I was just like, we got to get him on because, you know, before, um, you know, before you blow up to some extent, because I, I can see it happening, man. Your music's got that, you know, something that just draws you in. Yeah, I'm really, really hoping that's the case. You know, it's it's a dream of any artist to, you know, make it big. And I want to come down to Sydney, uh, you know, Melbourne, Sydney. I want to get down to uh, down to you guys. But, you know, obviously stays closed and, yeah. you know, it's quite difficult. You know, like Queensland, I love it here. I, it's my home. But the music scene up here just can't compete with Sydney and it can't compete with Melbourne and being stuck here, uh, has kind of slowed down my progress in a way. You know, I'm still still going hard. I'm still writing music. It's given me a lot of time to focus on that aspect. Uh, but live, you know, I don't have that that same edge that you guys do down there where all of, you know, Triple J is down there. You've got most of the labels are down there. Like, it's, it's the scene where people are looking. Um, but, you know, that aside, going back to uh, the question earlier, I'm trying to remember what was the question earlier. Yeah, I've gone off on um, a tangent. Man, I don't know. I went. I kind of just um, went on a little tangent there. But I would just wanted to say, like, you know, as well. I I know my my when I I studied a TAFE and I you know did a music course when I when I first moved down to Sydney. I'm originally from like a country part of um yeah you know New South Wales. But when I first came down here, I had a music business teacher and uh, he he. Um, he had the guys from five seconds of summer in his previous class. Really? And yeah. And the, oh. and like, um, you know, when he's talking, you know, about, about Michael and stuff like that from, from, you know, five sauce, the, their, their journey seemed to be that they, he was just like a stoner in the class. And all of a sudden one day he stuck around and had a conversation with the music business teacher. And he's like, yeah, man, I got all these, 
um, you know, views on YouTube. I'm not really sure what to do with it. And then they they had a look and he's like getting, you know, tens of thousands of views on his YouTube yeah. videos. And it's like, holy, holy, holy fuck, man. You've, 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 you're, you're making it, you know? Yeah. And then, and then, you know, kind of put a team around him to, you know, help navigate it. But um, yeah, I was just wondering, have you tried, you know, jumping on like TikTok and, you know, other various like platforms like that? I've tried TikTok, um, but wasn't really super successful. Um, you know, I want to get on YouTube, but the kind of thing that I want to do on YouTube is covers. Um, yeah. and I really want to get my voice up to scratch before I start jumping on YouTube and doing, you know, covers of other people's songs. Cause you know, people always say, you know, if you're going to do a cover, you got to do it better than the original. And I don't want to get on YouTube and have everyone be like, ew, what is this? You know, like that's a terrible yeah. cover of the song. Like I want to, I want people to come and listen to the stuff that I would do, you know, as well as my own music, but you know, listen to the covers and go, Oh, that's, you know, that's got a bit of a, uh, you know, bit of a uh, tang to it, you know, from the original, but you know, it's still pretty faithful and it's, you know, the voice is fantastic. That's, you know, what I've been working on lately actually is my singing. Um, it's been a journey this past like seven months that I've been going on. Uh, I thought I was under the impression that singing would be easy. Um, yeah, it's yeah. not <laughs> correct. Technique is, uh, very, very difficult to do. Yeah. And, uh, everyone that can do it is a mastermind and I'm in awe of them. So <laughs> I, I would love to know how they do it. Cause I'm still, I'm still only part way there. So when I finally figure it out, it's going to be a very, very glorious day. What do you find hard? Is it just like, um, you know, like getting the notes, pitch, timing, like what, what no. seems to be the, my pitch, my pitch is very, very good. I've got no problem with pitch. It's when you sing with correct technique, it's more about feeling than it is about actually hearing the note because when you sing untrained, like I currently am, I'm still going to classify myself as untrained. Yeah. It's you hear the full note in your head. Whereas when you sing with proper technique, the feeling that you feel uh, and the sound that you hear is very thin and weak compared to what comes out your mouth. And it's very deceiving. And that's the part that I'm still trying to work around. Yeah. Um, okay. So, you know, when you hear an opera singer belting out this huge tune and it's full and it's fat in their head, it's super thin and it's just putting in no effort. And that's, that's the part that I'm trying to work my brain around currently. So it's, um, it's the feeling you've got to lock onto the feeling and not focus on what you can hear because that's very deceiving. Like, have you got a, are you working with a teacher or just by yourself trying to get the diaphragm breathing and everything? Yeah, in check? I'm working with a teacher. I, I tried for a couple of months to do it by myself and I just, I went nowhere because you can read all day. I did literally read for hours, hours every day for a couple of months and tried to put it all into practice, but they're just words uh, at the end of the day. You know, it takes someone to, you know, I could, I could read another language and be like, yep, I've read it. It's all good, but I don't understand it. It yeah. takes someone to come along and translate it for me and put it onto my body for me to go, yes, I get it now. Um, and that's been the journey I've been on with my singing teacher. He goes, do this and practice it. I come back the next week and I've got that aspect of the voice going and he goes, all right, next week we're going to work on this. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's, it's still ongoing. You know, I'm, I'm very, very close to the final product, but you know, it's still, still a work in progress. And, you know, one of my personal goals with Catnac is to increase the range that I'm singing. So, you know, as, as a dude right now, my vocal range goes up to like an F an F sharp above middle C, which is pretty stock standard. In fact, it's actually on the low end of male voices. Um, and being in a pop band, I really want to be able to get it past, uh, that all the way up to like a middle C, um, yeah. you know, my range is actually like a B flat below soprano C like that's where my voice can go. Um, I just, uh, can't fully use that range yet. So that's, that's what I really want to work on. And, uh, that's my personal goal. That's what I really strive for every day to practice. Are you, are you like measuring it on your like chest voice or your falsetto? Like, so, uh, with, with correct technique, chest voice, chest voice for yeah, anyone that yeah. knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> singing, chest voice. I can, you can take that all the way up to that soprano, you know, B flat, like with correct technique, 
you can blend your head and your chest and bring that all the way up. So it sounds like you're in chest when really you're just mixing the two. So it's, it's effortless, it's easy, um, but it sounds full, which is the awesome part. So when you hear any of those dudes going crazy high, it's, it's effortless and it's, it's not chest voice. It's not head voice. It's a blend of the two. So it's, that's where the feeling part comes in. Yeah. Wow. I was told by um, a really talented singer with um, singing techniques that because in Sydney, there's been a lot of days where you had to wear a mask for like last two years. Yes. And oh she God. brought up the idea that wearing a mask can help your technique in breathing when it comes to singing as well. I would say yes and no. In my experience, it helps to, you know, give you a little bit of that fitness because you're breathing in, um, you know, you're, I don't want to be the kind of person that says your oxygen is limited because it's not, it just feels like it. Um, but it's one of those things where for me, I'm wearing a mask all day. Like I used to work at Woolies. Uh, I now don't, but I used to, and I would wear the mask all day for like nine hour shifts. Yeah. When breathing in the same hot air has, was terrible for my voice. I, you know, I, couldn't sing by the end of the day because there was nothing left. It just dried out my throat, which was horrible. Um, wearing a mask in my personal opinion for singing, uh, is terrible. I, I don't recommend it. If I can avoid wearing a mask and, and I know I'm going to sing, I will because it will, it'll screw with my voice. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying, I was trying to see the physics behind that one, Paul. I was, uh, you know, yeah, no, she, she was very open about it on the Instagram story that she was, Oh, it helps you breathing. I'm like, okay. So I thought, I thought I'd pass on the knowledge if, if it was true or not. No, I, look, in my opinion, having a mask on is terrible for the voice. Um, yeah. You know, great hell, it's terrible for the voice. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't know, like, how, you know, I read, um, you know, th about Frank Sinatra, you know, recently, and, uh, you know, uh, those were, there was an Italian, I can't remember the guy's name, but he asked Frank for singing lessons, and Frank said, um, get in the pool get in the pool and hold your breath every day and like um you know just increase your you know you know how long you can hold you know oxygen in your lungs underwater um you know and uh you know push yourself so you you don't float to the surface mm. and then also like you know let all the you know let let half your you know lung capacity out and then sit with it under the water and just until you could you know hold your breath for long periods of time and i think i think is that what you know she you know she might have been getting at with the fitness thing yeah it's yeah it's more like slow breathing and it's more like concert like concentrating and, and um oh, was it like controlling your breathing as well i think that's what she meant by it i mean it's an interesting thing to think about because you could do it without the mask i yeah. do it all the time yeah. but I, if that works for her like it's all personal preference maybe it's more of a covering of your mouth moving around all the time because it don't look silly <laughs> maybe it's more of a cover maybe. up maybe um hamish um touched on a very important thing about you how you when you went solo there was just no duds in your music do you think being in a band and helping you like fix up the mistakes before you went on solo helped a lot as well I, yes. So I used to be in several bands. One, I was the drummer and one, I was the front man. Um, one was like a, a pop rock band and the other one was a grunge band. And I learned a lot from both, you know, both had their ups and downs. I enjoyed both of them nonetheless, yeah. but I learned a lot. And through that time I was constantly songwriting. I would try to write a song a week, uh, if possible. Um, so I've got, hundred million songs that I've written majority of them are kind of unfinished in ways but I learned a lot in the songwriting aspect to bring into Katnak and I've only gotten better as time goes on because you know I've got a whole catalog of unreleased songs I've got like 38 unreleased songs that you know at any time I would love to put out there but you know it's expensive yeah um and doing the songwriting aspect of all of that every single week and day and spare minute has been fantastic because I've studied, you know, what I enjoy and what I love about songs that I listen to and tried to add those elements into my music. So if I can hear a song is mixed a certain way and I really love that, I'll try and find what that piece of mixing is and bring it into mine. If I love 
a kick sound. I'll try and replicate that and turn it into my own thing for my song. If I love a guitar tone, I'll try and make it, you know, bass, whatever it is, synths, I'll mess with all that kind of stuff. And through trial and error and making mistakes, I, I can bring all the best elements into what I write uh, and that gets released so that, you know, to the listener's ear, they just perceive that there are no duds because they go, oh, this is really well crafted, you know, yeah. must be really good. But yeah, like Thomas Edison, there's one light bulb, but there's 20,000 failures. So um, or was it 2000? I don't know. But he failed a lot of times before he got there. So, you know, that's basically my trial and error with songwriting. I make a lot of mistakes and I find the one thing that sticks and go, that's great. And I use it. And I think you're like, I think you're doing a good job, man. Like, you know, I'm, I imagine like most people think that there's like a lot of work behind, behind songwriting, but it's, you know, I think uh, it's fascinating to see how persistent you are, like to have 38 <laughs> songs ready to go. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's real dedication. Yeah. yeah. I like, admire your dedication because um, when we got a message from you, you were reaching out to us and like yeah. throwing uh, your music out, which was good. I like the dedication and your passion. And I was like, Oh shit. Like I was, like i was not i was more i'm um, afraid of you than you're afraid of us because of, oh this guy's serious but that's yeah, what yeah. like i like the dedication and the passion of of you and i wish a lot of people were the same as all just out there being dedicated and it's... determined and i like that like oh. i was afraid of you really but i'm like we're so glad like hamish took control of that message like yeah let's get this guy on he yeah, sounds it's... really serious and i like that it's it's one of those things where I take it very seriously, you know, even though I'm a small fry in a very, very big setting, um, I, I live by the kind of, I don't know if you could call it a motto, but I live by that, the motto that if you want to make it, you've got to act like you've already make, made it. So like I act very professional. I will always stay to watch every band at gigs unless, you know, I've got something on. Um, I'll always try and say hello to every band, make friends with them. You know, I'll always, um you know do everything in a way that you would expect someone who's already made it to have that professional standard i will do that um because at the end of the day people notice um and i'm just waiting for the right set of people to notice and hopefully we can uh take catnack around the world to sydney uk you know all those places yeah, man, I'm surprised you. I'm surprised you haven't been down here. And like, um, you know, have you been? Have you pitched your music to festivals and stuff? Yeah, we have, and it's just one of those things where, like, I don't want to rag on Australia too much, but the kind of music that's popular here isn't really the kind of music that I write, which is, um, a tough gig, you know, for me when I'm here and not anywhere else in the world. So, like, the music that I write is really inspired by um you know british bands you know so like the wombats the 1975 two-door cinema club i really love those type of bands and they're all from the uk and i can't go to the uk yet so i can't really do anything over there and i want to bring it down to sydney and melbourne because i feel like you guys will be more open to the stuff yeah. i'm writing but queensland is not so open it's it's a bit of a tough one um you know what's, i wish what's, what's popular up in up in queensland like what is uh, the um, to my knowledge, right at the minute, I believe punk is pretty popular. Yeah. And psych rock has been pretty popular for a long time. It was reggae for a little bit, <laughs> like a year or two. It was reggae. Um, yeah. That's that's not my thing. Uh, but, you know, Brisbane loved it. Um, yeah. Right now it's psych rock. Um, I feel like you guys catch, catch like you know, like, like Sydney will have like a, you know, one, you know, Triple J will get behind one band and really push them. And then I feel mm -hmm. like uh, you guys, the rule, the rest of the country, except for Melbourne, Melbourne always does, it seems to do its own, you know, own thing. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then I feel like the rest of the country just, you know, takes, takes our one thing and, you know, then replicates it until it yeah. you know, can no longer be replicated. But meanwhile, at the, in, you know, in, in, in Sydney and Melbourne, there's just, there's just so much going on that you don't really know what, what's popular outside. Does that mm. make sense? Like Sydney, because Triple J is down there, that's, that's the home of Australian music. You know, anyone and anything that's popular would be down there because that's where it comes from originally. Um, yeah. You know, when, you have all the labels, majority of the radio stations, you know, the Triple J, like that's 
that's where things are going to get created because it's a lot easier for Triple J to back someone that's in their home turf. Yeah. Um, you know, like it's it's one of those things where Triple J don't really come up to Brisbane all that often. And when I say come up, I don't mean like quite literally. I mean figuratively, like yeah. they don't really push anyone from up here. It's very rare that you see a Brisbane band make it with Triple J. Was that what was, was probably the last? What, are the chats from Brisbane? Uh, they're from Queensland. Whether they're from yeah. Brisbane, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, I think the last one to get pushed from Brisbane was what's her name? Um, I actually worked with her at Woolworths, Psycho. Um, she she's uh, been with Triple J for a little bit now, a couple of months. Yeah. Um, and she's getting pushed by them. So, you know, it's it's very few and far between. And trying to be that person that they pick is, it's hard, especially when you're someone like me that's writing music that's coming from a completely different side of the world. Um, you know, why would they want to promote something that, you know, doesn't sound Australian? So, Do you yeah. think that you need to, though? Like, I, I, re- like, I don't think you need to, like, you know, be with tri- Triple J, like, because um, I feel like Triple J, you know, just hand you know, picks who they think is going to be, you know, popular at the time. But yeah, have you heard it? Have you... Over music, in my opinion. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. But it's all about who can they sell rather than how good the music is. And I'm not ragging on anyone that's been picked yeah. up by Triple J, but there's been a certain few that I've gone, that's not good. Yeah. Um, well, but, the... you know, it's all personal preference and yeah, like, yeah. I like the music that I like. Uh, and you know, there's a lot, a lot of people that love the stuff that they're writing. Um, so, you know, but you oh, know, man. everyone that I speak to says you can either go through triple J and get big in a year, or you can do it the hard way and get big in 10 years. You know, it's, it's, it's still doable. It's very doable, yeah. but you just got to be doing it for a very long time and a lot longer than you would if you got picked up by a label or triple J. Yeah, but I, I I feel like if you if you kind of take the second round, your 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 fame is is, is yeah. uh, sustained. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, have you heard of a band um, from Sydney called Sticky Fingers? I have. Yes. Oh, yeah. Are they, are they still going? I like I've, I've seen they released something a little while ago, but there was a couple of scandals there that I didn't think they were going to continue. Yeah. Well, well, they they have, and like um, you know, like they're they're one of those bands that Triple J didn't did like they Triple J took you know all their replicas but they didn't take sticky fingers at first yeah um you know uh you, they they were you know just a band from newtown that got a that got a good manager that was like guys you don't need to stick around in the city go fuck off you know go all along the coastline of new south wales so you know go from you know sydney newcastle you know wollongong and go up to you know foster up to um Coffs Harbour, you know, up to Byron and just do play, play along that circuit. Cause most of those towns anyway, only have like two or three different radio stations. And if you're driving through and playing at a pub one time and a bunch of people come and see you and they like you, mm. or they're going to be, they're going to be, you know, more interested if you start putting out music and, you know, and they appreciate that you came to their town as well. Mm. And, and all of a sudden they would, they, they just started traveling and then they would come back to Sydney, release something, but then kind of drive around and just make, you know, like, you know, live off nothing really. And for, for, for a year or two and went to Europe. And then within about the period of like 10, less than 10 years, they came back and were playing like all phones, uh, you know, arena down here, which is like, yep. or, you know, sold it out for three or four nights, which is, you know, 60, 70,000 people. But, you know, and, um, and then Triple J tried to, you know, take them in and be like, oh, now we love you guys, you know, mm. come in. And then they, then they, you know, didn't play Triple J's game and, you know, came out and were, um, you know, unpolitically correct. And then they got upset with them and banned them. And then they became even bigger somehow. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, and there's a lot of like rappers down here too that, you know, Triple J don't want and Triple J like, um absolutely hate and um and they just seem to you know get get big on their own just by traveling and and kind of hustling and also there's like 400 community radio stations like across australia too and um have you got your music up on emra yes yeah yeah chuck it up on there man and just ring like you know rural radio stations you know don't matter like i noticed one thing you know traveling through australia is that like all the radio stations throughout the country seem to be way more receptive in 
little towns yes and and um you know little littler cities and coastal cities because they only got two or three so it's like oh this is a big deal you know Hmm. and um yeah go that go that route man like take it take it in your take it in your own hands don't wait for because triple j will come to you if you if you suddenly get you know ten thousand. um you know if you start get, getting in spotify playlist and they just they, they see you making a noise they'll be like knocking on your door yeah it's it's one of those things where it's tough to get on the spotify playlist it's tough to do this even if you think your song is fantastic and we actually wanted to do a little tour well would have been this year but just didn't happen due to covid because we wanted to go down uh to you know new south wales and then keep going do a little sydney thing but just Never, never came through due to the whole COVID. Oh man, 2022 is going to be a year. You have to do it. Oh, I want to, you know, like I've, I've always been scared of touring because, you know, it's a new town, new place. I don't know anyone. They don't know me. Like who's going to come that kind of stuff. But I think, you know, I've, I've made a lot of friends and a lot of contacts through doing stuff like this. And hopefully, you know, I could, you know, find bands, bigger bands that would play with us and we can make a really good time of it and, you know, boost them, boost us, that kind of stuff. Oh man, for sure. And when this video comes out, I'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll send it to a few different people and, uh, you know, get them to get in touch with you and, you know, kind of help you out in, you know, like bands and artists and stuff from Sydney and, you know, That'd be amazing. You know get them to, especially like your kind of music and, you know, that do similar things and, you know, all work together to make it, make it happen. And um, I just had a second thought too, like, you know how you're talking about psych rock before, yeah. you know, up in Brisbane, um, a, a couple of like, maybe like two years ago, I played with this band called the Lazy Eyes in Sydney. And all of yeah. a sudden they were hand plucked by, by the, the, the Triple J thing for the sound, you know, trying to, yeah. trying to get all the bands that sound a bit like Tame Impala. Yeah. And, um, you know, all of a sudden, you know, they, they were they were touring with the 1975 opening for Liam Gallagher and you're kind of like this is bizarre this is bizarre like they're they're, you know the most out there sounding thing shit you could ever hear in your life opening for you know um just the just the complete you know like your your sound you know it makes sense but it's you know yeah so man I just think fuck it do it you know just just take it grab it you know in your by your take it by the take it by the balls man you know yeah it's you have to you yeah you yeah can't let anything get to you literally just have to do it and if you're scared and think oh what will what will people think just don't just don't think just do it you yeah. know they can hate it they can love it the amount of rejection i've got with all of the stuff that i've been doing is astronomical um you know not to say that anything in the stuff that i do is bad it's just that yeah. it's not what people are looking for and it's at first it's a tough pill to swallow, but you just get to a point where it's like, all right, onto the next thing, forget you. I'll come back with another song. Um, and you just keep in a way, you just keep bugging them until eventually they say, piss off. Yes, I'll do it. Um, yeah. and that's, that's worked a lot for me. Well, man, I think, you know, I think that's just, what about Spotify playlists? Is that a hard, you know, thing to, to get onto? Yes. It's very tough because no one knows who controls it. Yeah. It's not like you can message, uh, you can message a lot of people that have Spotify um, accounts that do playlists that are, you know, quite popular, but no one seems to know who curates official Spotify playlists. And that's, that's the money maker right there. That's where you want to be a part of Yeah. Um, because people see that and people pay attention because uh, you get put alongside some really big bands that are official. Yeah. Um, but just getting to be a part of that is really, really tough because they're like, oh, who are you? Like, why would we put your song there? And you're like, please, it's a fantastic song. Just listen to it. And they're like, oh, we don't care. We'll find it later. It's the whole catch 22 of the music industry is to get big, people have to take notice, but to take notice, they want you to be big. And it's like, come on, man. Like there's got to be a middle ground somewhere. Yeah. Like that, you know, it's, it's a tough, tough game, man, but you know, I, I I can see you doing 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 you know well by like um just fucking just just hustling just hustling through. Like if you came down to Sydney, man, I, I you know or 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 even you know Melbourne, I I think that that you know that people would certainly take notice of you if you're as good as you are live on the fucking you know on your that you know on your your recorded music. If you can play that live like that, man, oh, we definitely do. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> A lot of people have said that we are better than the recordings. So 
Well, man, then you're just lightning in a bottle, man. You, you know, it's just a matter of time before, you know, other people like, you know, like myself and, you know, I like my eyes opened up because I get, you know, I do doing a bit of radio. I get sent a lot of music and your yeah. music, man, I opened and like, um, you know, it was like, fuck, this is really good. <laughs> Why? You know, and then I was having a look at like, um, so I think it's just a, you know, a matter of time for you in right place as well. They, yeah, look, it's one of those things where I've been told from a lot of people that have made it that they kind of just sit and watch from the sidelines. They wait for you to make it before they help you. Yeah. You know, as, as much as that sucks because, you know, you believe you're great and you believe that they should have helped you earlier because, you know, it would have saved you a number of years. They've been watching you to know if you're really putting in the effort, you know, they'll, they'll see your posts, they'll see this and that they see you tag them and they go, all right, we'll wait a couple of years and we'll see if he goes anywhere. If not, we'll see if he's worth the time, you know, they're paying attention, but it just doesn't feel like it. And that's the yeah. hard part. That's you got to wake up every morning and just tell yourself in the end, it's worth it. Yeah. Um, whether or not you make it, you've got to be, you've got to believe that you deserve to be there because if you don't, why are you trying? Absolutely, man. And um, we, we spoke to a girl like last week who, um, you know, we interviewed and uh, she did, she worked for Warner for a while. And she's saying, it was telling us one thing that really intrigued me is that, you know, there's scouts at your gigs and you don't know about it. You know, they know about you and you're put on a, you know, on a, a, you know, noted down and, you know, depending on how, how well you're doing by yourself, you know, if you start to make a splash and, you know, start to, you know, make a, make a noise, then they're, then they're there. Yeah. But I think that was really interesting is like, they're, they are watching. They're just waiting for, for you to make enough of a noise that it's like, okay, you're worth the, you're worth the investment. Cause I mean, like what does a label do? It's just, you, you know, a distributor on a large scale, I suppose. It's just one of those things where we're all a commodity, you know, how much can they sell you for? If you're not going to be worth that much, why would they get you on? It's, it's one of those things where you can make it all you want, but if they don't think they can sell you, then they won't be a part of you. So, you know, I, not that I, and I really hate when people call it selling out, it's making a move in your career in a different direction from just being free to do it yourself. And it helps, you know, Oh, 100%. Yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, I would, I would love to be signed by a label. I would love to do it by myself as well, but you know, which one will take me to where I want to be enough that I can take that and then move off into my own direction. Because, you know, a lot of labels like to um, take a lot of control of what you do. Yeah. And, you know, you can't see it because I've got a very bland wall behind me, but in front of me is my home studio. Um, yeah. And I love doing everything myself. I produce my own music. I write my own music. I play all the instruments in my songs um you know i sing all my stuff like i love doing that aspect of it it's what i enjoy doing so i don't ever if i can avoid it want it taken away from me yeah um so you know if a label goes oh we're gonna make you do this and be like no nah, we're gonna call it there before the contract's even signed like i if people are gonna help me they can help me in my studio i'm not gonna have someone else you know write all my songs for me and that kind of stuff have you pr approached independent labels and thrown your stuff at like Mushroom and people like that, like uh, Michael Gadinsky's company? I haven't done that kind of stuff because I didn't know you could, in all honesty, uh, if I'm being honest. I, uh, I just thought they would come to you. Uh, I didn't want to be the right. kind of person that goes, please, I beg of you, sign me. Like, well, not that I would say that, but, you know, I didn't want to throw something to them and have them be like this sucks because that that would actually cut deep <laughs> but no, man like there's 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 a bunch of like in, independent labels that are that'll push your stuff and they're not going to make you sign like you know 360 contracts and you know take control of your whole life but we'll push your we'll push your music and have the people making the phone calls behind the okay. scenes for you have a i gen you know what i will try that it, yeah can, aside from this podcast so the viewers don't get to hear it <laughs> you can just message me some little independent labels from sydney uh, yeah. that you think are really good because i i don't know many i'm i've never really thought about labels ironically coming from yeah. the kind of music that i make i've never thought about labels before i kind of just wanted to make it 
somehow, but I never thought about which labels would pick that kind of stuff up. Well, man, like, like, you know, it doesn't really matter like which, which label you've got, like the label's job is just, um, you know, they're the mailman for your music, you know, they're just yeah. going to take it and send it out. And then it's the people's job. Like, you know, like me and, you know, me and Paul here, we heard your fucking music and we're like, man, we have to have this guy on. And, um, you know, other people are going to hear this music and be like, man, like, what, 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 how, how do we not know about you? You know, like, I, I think that's the thing. It's funny that you say all that because the amount of people that have, I like to personally message everyone that follows my page, um, you know, because that's, it makes it a lot more personal, you know, like when you follow a page and you just follow it, that's it. You know, it's the end of the day. Like you'll see it come through. You never like any of the posts. You're like, Oh yeah, that's that person that I followed a while ago. Yeah. But when you message them, they go, Oh, that's a real person on the end of that. Like I'll yeah. pay a little bit of attention. Um, and the amount of people, that follow your page without actually listening to your music is really kind of ridiculous. You're like, why are you following me if you've never heard me before? And then you send them a message and they're like, oh yeah, I'll listen to it right now. And then they listen to it and they come back to you and go, oh my God, like, how have I not heard of you sooner? Like, are you, are you famous? And you're like, uh, no, unfortunately <laughs> not. <laughs> um, I'd love that. Uh, but it's, yeah, like you said, it's the job of the people to listen to the music, to make it a thing, to make you famous, to make you big, to make you a household name. Um, you know, like there's only so much you can do on your own. It's the job of everyone else that listens to the music to go, yeah, no, this is great. I'm going to tell my friends about it. Um, word of mouth is very important. Yeah. Uh, getting people to, to listen to your stuff is, it's a tough slog because, you know, pe uh, people don't have, you know, whole three and a half minutes to spare, you know, uh, you send them a message like, I'll get to it later. They forget, you know, like life goes on. Yeah. So it's, it's tough to get people to listen to your music. And that's you know where the Spotify playlists come in because they put it on while they're having a shower or they put it on while they're running or whatever. And that's where you get the, the listens. But, you know, until you can make it on that kind of stuff, you just got to kind of patiently wait and just do your best. That's it. That's all you can do. And that's what I try. I try to better myself every day. Uh, you know, cause at the end of the day, at least I feel good about myself. You know, I yeah. did all that I could. Yeah. I, I mean, I think you've like, I just, I just, as I said before, man, I just feel, feel like you're, you're, you, you know, you're a lightning in a bottle kind of guy. It's just, it's just, you're, you're just waiting on the, on the, on the time and the, and the, and the moment I, I just, you know, I feel like it's coming in your way, but I, I just want to ask like, how many instruments do you play? Because if you, if you play drums, right. And then you yeah. also, I've seen you, you know, videos of you on playing guitar. Do you also do a bit of, you, and you've got a keyboard in the background. Um, you know, yeah, there it is. Hold on. I got it. Yeah, man. How many are you up to at the moment? Um, so, you know, I'll try and keep it short. I started on guitar. I moved to drums because I really liked them. I played piano as well in primary school and I still play it. I play bass as well. Um, and, uh, you know, through the keyboard, all the synthy stuff that I do. Um, and then vocals was the last thing that I started working on. So, you know, like I was saying 20 minutes ago, I, yeah. that's the thing that I'm currently focusing on and trying to get really good at. Um, I play, I play all the main instruments. So guitar, drums, bass, uh, and piano, um, yeah. because that fills out the band. Um, and then vocals on top of that, because I write all my music and then I have to sing it as well. So uh, something that I have personally worked on, like I, I've never got drum training. I've never got any formal keyboard training. I was, I played through primary school for yeah. guitar base i've never been trained it's just one of those things where i picked it up as i've gone and um just taken a little bit of common sense into how i play and then made it happen man you like the that i think that that is an incredible like feat to have you know to be kind of proficient on so many instruments and be able to do it yourself like you know like I'm like, imagine that, like that side of things makes recording for you a lot easier, a lot, a it lot cheaper as well. Speeds up the process. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Like, yeah. uh, in my previous band, we, we were together, I'll just say for a year when we were yeah. writing together. Um, so for a year while we were writing together, we wrote one and a half songs in a year. Yeah. Catnax been going two years and I've got rough, roughly 40 songs yeah. that 
I've written and produced all by myself um, because that's what I love to do. Like it's, I can come home and work on them whenever I want. I don't have to wait for other band members to be present. Yeah. You know, whenever I write a song that goes into our live set, I will always ask the members in my band, do you like your part? What would you change? Um, so the live is always a little bit different from the recording. And I like that because people get the best of both worlds. They listen to the song and go, this is great. And then they get something that's even cool alive. Yeah. Um, because I'm not much of a jazz player and my bass player is, and so is my drummer. So when they bring their kind of flair to the track, it's so tasty, just so tasty live. And the recording's pretty stock standard because, oh, not stock standard, I try to make everything very interesting because that's what I like. But the, the vocals are the main focus of what I write. But then live, I give them their time to shine and it's, if I was in the crowd, I would love that. It's yeah. so tasty. They're such great players. Oh man, that that that's you know that's brilliant. You know, like if you, in a way, you're almost like Prince in the fact that you can just kind of do do everything, man. And like sometimes, do you? I, you know, I was going to ask before as well. Like, uh, why why does it seem like um, you know singers are good like uh, percussionist and percussionists? you know, can be also good singers. It feels like there's a crossover, like every, every lead, you know, singer that we get on has a real, you know, is, you know, plays, plays drums to the side or seems to have a really good feel for percussion. I mean, it's, it's all about timing with singing as well. As much as people don't really remember that aspect of singing, you do have to be able to sing in time as well as on pitch. Yeah. Um, so it is, it is kind of a rhythmic thing. Um, and being able to be in time there helps a lot. And you find a lot of singers also play the tambourine, which yeah. would make great timing and percussionists. So, um, because, you know, when you can't do anything with your hands, you put a tambourine in it. So, <laughs> you know, there you go. Um, that, that would definitely, uh, probably be a solid, a solid piece of evidence as to why they're good percussionists as well as vocalists. Yeah, man, I thought I'd just pick your brain with that question because I've, I've asked a lot of people but haven't actually got a solid answer. So thank you for finally, you know. Look, whether it's true or not, it sounded pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no, well, it makes it makes sense, you know, to, that, um, but, it, you know, it's just such a bizarre crossover that I've noticed with so many people. It's just like, man, um, there must be, there must be some kind of, you know, physics or, you know, science behind it. Um, but like, what can we what can like we you know like you know all the people watching this i suppose expect from you like in the next in the next couple of months you said you got 38 songs you know recorded um you know have you got a bunch of how are you planning on like releasing them and what's what's the uh strategy there next year um i want to try and get out a song a month if i can yeah um, you know i want to keep just getting them out there because I don't want to hold on to all of these things like five years before I finally release an album. I want to, I want to try and get a song a month out. Um, and you know, for these starting from the start, these next couple of months is kind of what is like the dead zone of the music industry. No one really does anything towards the end of the year because no one goes out to save money. Yeah. Um, no one plays shows because no one's going to turn up and releasing music kind of just falls flat because everyone's focused on a lot of different stuff. Um, so February is kind of where that will start um, because that's when people start to liven up again. You know, they've made a little bit of money after Christmas, you know, life goes on. So starting from probably February yeah. um, is when we'll start doing that. And I want to try and push that as, you know, a single every month and do a tour. I don't know how early in the year we might do that. I want to try and get some really, really good bands to play with. You know, I want to, I want to try and make them as big of a spectacle as I can for someone that's never been to Sydney and Melbourne and, you know, haven't even played in Byron before. So. Oh man, you um, do it. <laughs> Please yeah, do. So I want to, I want to make it a big thing that we're going places, even if we're not a big thing. Yeah. I want people to think that we are a big thing. And that's, that comes back to that professional thing. Like make, you play like you're playing to a huge stadium. Yeah. Uh, you know, my goal for me is to play Wembley in the UK. I say it all the time. That is my goal. 
I want to be standing on that stage. And to me, when I stand there and look at the crowd, I can say to myself, I've made it. And until then, I will keep pushing to be there. Yeah, man, just just get out. Like, also, do you do, you do a bit of research on like bands in different different towns? Because I feel like it'd be very achievable for you if you went, Chuck. You know, you went down on a on a Thursday down the coast and kind of did one show. You know, Mullumbimby, Byron on a Friday, kind of you know go down to Coss Harbour on a Saturday, and then you in Newcastle by you know Sunday find some late night. You know probably shithole to 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 play but you know at least you're doing it and then you can kind of come down to sydney you know um and uh you know wait out the wait out the week and kind of just come down and explore yourself during the week and figure out you know and talk to a bunch of people and you know um but at least have some shows booked for that week and you can kind yeah. of do it but i mean if you get in touch with like bands in bands in byron you know like because byron's got you know, have you been to byron I've been many times, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, there's just like you know people playing on the in pubs and all over the place. So even if you could, yeah. you know, do one of those ones where it's just yourself and your guitar, even in the you know in those kind of outdoor outdoor areas, at least you're still doing it, you know. And then when you come yeah. back, you you know they're like, oh, you were here before, weren't you? And you're like, yeah, <laughs> I've just been here and yeah. everywhere. And, um, you know, it doesn't, you know, even if you just do it on like the, the, the very, very low scale the first time and it's just fucking shit, but at least you've, at least you've done it. And now you can come back and you can be like, oh, okay, now I know how I done, to do it better. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, the tough part is finding venues and bands, honestly, that's, that's yeah. the tough part. And once you've found them, the tough part, because you're from Queensland, none of the venues come back because they're like, why would we get you to play as if you're going to bring anyone? so it's that's a tough one. Oh, really like i thought yeah. i thought like because you know going on your like you know your your page it's not like you're you're starting from zero i could understand that if you're like you know just a regular bloke with a couple hundred followers but if you're just jumping into some town and being like hey i am from you know here in brisbane or you know up from up north I'm coming down on a tour and like and and pitch it as if it like you know as a it's a really really big thing like i reckon you could do it man i i you know i i faith and um you know after this video i'll you know put you know get you to talk to people that have done it beforehand and figure yeah. out how to do it and you know make it make it happen for you because it's certainly like achievable and like the borders are opening up in december is that right paul is that what's happening uh yeah, I think December international travel by December. Yeah. Does. So, just on, um, yeah, just on the Sydney area, there's a lot of bands and artists that are very friendly, and they rarely say no for you jumping on as, as part of the set list. I mean, on on the lineup. So even yeah. if you just reach out a band, say, "Look, is it right? Just play before you or something, just to do a warm up gig." People, a lot of people say, "Yeah, no worries, mate. Come jump on, you know, half an hour beforehand." And if and if and because you're good, they'll like like enjoy you, and then they like want to ask you again for a future. So it's yeah. always good to have that like network going on as well. Yeah, I need to get down to Sydney. Yeah, just man. need to make it happen. Need to make it happen. Yeah, I think you, you just get the shittiest van that won't break down, and uh, you know, pack a bunch of t-shirts and go. Because I mean, like, imagine on the first one, it's going to be you, you're living off pennies. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, on that on that thing, and just try to flog off as many t-shirts and you know merch as you possibly can, and that's also a great thing too. Like if you leave a t-shirt in a town, right, that somebody's going to be wearing that, walking around, and they're advertising you for free. Yes, all, of all for they're paying to advertise you in a way, and it's like, well, oh, I remember you. You're the fella on you know on old mate shirt. <laughs> yeah, he's had that shirt for the last two years. Yeah, I can't forget you. Yeah, that yeah. would be good. Just. Need people wearing the shirts, need people wearing the hoodies, need to get them out there. Yeah. Have you heard of a band called um, Skeggs? They're like an Aussie band. Uh, yeah. Like, I feel like the way that they got big in a, in Australia was just having like a sick merch merch line. Like, because everybody, the, you know, all the skaters started, you know, one guy, I saw one guy, you know, when I was living in Dubbo with like a pair of like Skeg socks. And the next week I saw every, you know, like, like, you know, half a dozen people with skegs, you know, clothes on and then, and so on. And, you know, and um, I don't even think half the people knew who, who the actual fucking band was. They just liked the, yeah. <laughs> like the look of the clothes and stuff. And then all of a sudden, 
I'm watching this band, you know, become become huge because of everyone's advertising them. Yeah. Pretty good idea, honestly. Yeah, like they awesome. they, they tapped into something, you know. And um, like I, I truly believe that that is a, you know, a crucial part of Skeks' story, just having a, you know, sick, you know, merch line that looks like a skater brand. Yeah, that is literally their target audience. Yeah, yeah. Did a good job. Yeah, but um, yeah, like when you, um, you know, like even, even you know, how Paul was saying just before about uh, about like Sydney guys being like friendly and open to having people play and, you know, um, come and join. Mm. The same thing with Melbourne too, man. Like there's a, you know, they're, they're both just two communities that are, you know, quite, quite similar, but very different. But I feel like... Um, just just start reaching out to you know different bands and 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 people and just being like you know get in touch and just become friends from a you know from a distance and um yeah man like i you know i'm 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 really excited doing this interview for you because i i'm just i'm i'm way you know i reckon next year if we were ever to do this podcast again It'll yeah. be two will be, you know, it'll be a very, very different, you'll be a very different person, I reckon, by the end I of it. So. Yeah. Like, um, but where do you play in Queensland too? Like, what is the circuit up there? Like, is it just the the Gold Coast, Brisbane, and then a bunch of little yeah. towns? So you can you can certainly go up um up the hey, York. <laughs> no, so not all the way up there, but like there are, there are a lot of towns that stretch up the coast to the sunny coast and yeah. you know, going down, you would probably do the cold coast as on your way to Sydney, but you know, up past the sunny coast, yeah, there's a lot of stuff up there that you could play. Um, you know, that's not something that is done as regularly as going down to Sydney. Um, so, you know, in, in all honesty, I'm, I'm not, sh- I'm not even sure where I would start in terms of heading up. I know the soul bar is up on the sunny coast but that's about the only venue that i've really heard of Uh, a lot of the bands from the sunny coast actually come to brisbane um so you know for brisbane the the scene and the circuit is basically the valley fortitude valley i don't know if you've heard of that no i haven't Um, it's it's where all the bars all the nightclubs all the venues are in like two or three streets or two or three blocks they're kind of just in that area and uh all the bands kind of cycle through the venues um and there's you know there's one really big venue in the middle of it that opened a year or two ago called fortitude uh music hall yeah and that's 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 big so all the big bands play there and around that venue are a heap of uh, just little venues small to medium there's no really really big venues except for that one yeah there's just a lot of small medium venues that uh, a lot of local bands play at yeah, nice. And like with local bands and stuff up there, like if a band comes up from Sydney up to up to you know Queensland, are they perceived as you know bigger than they are? Like, are they going to draw yes. more of a crowd? Yeah, ooh, yeah. See, that's the catch twenty two. They're perceived as oh, that's fancy. They're coming up, but a lot of the gigs that I've come to from bands that have come from Melbourne and Sydney, there's no one there, and it's tough because you know they're good, they're worth it, but. Yeah. There's just no one there. And in my personal experience, I haven't traveled a lot gig wise to, you know, Melbourne or Sydney or around Australia, but I've just found that people in Brisbane don't go out to gigs if they don't know you, Yeah. Um, which is sucks if you're a local band because, you know, you thrive off having people that don't know you come to your gigs, not people that do. Um, you know, when you get bigger people that know your music, that's your target audience. But you you need people that just walk through and see you and go, oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. But people just don't go out. They go to nightclubs, they go to bars, but they don't go to gigs. Yeah. They don't go to actual venues. Um, so it's really, really hard to just have people come across you. There's only one bar that I can think of that has a genuinely great setup that the bar is located right next to the stage. And that is uh, Tomcat, and it's it's promoted as a venue, but it's also promoted as a bar, which means a lot of pe- people come off the streets for the bar aspect of it, and then see the band. 
Yeah. Whereas majority of the venues in Brisbane are marketed as purely venues, which mean if you don't want to go see a band, you're not going to that place because it's not a bar, it's a venue. Yeah. Um, so that's where it kind of kicks you in the shin a little bit because no one's coming to see you. No one will randomly walk in off the street because they go, oh, it's the bright side. I'm not going to go there because that's a venue. You know, I'm going to go to another place that's purely because I want to drink. And if there's a live band, great, but there never is because that's it's a bar, not a venue. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, man, it's interesting too, because like we, we we have that problem like down here to a certain degree, like, um, I mean, but like at the venues, you can still drink, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, so they're like pubs. It, would, they, would they be pubs? It's, it's one of those things where there's no seating in the venues. That's the big thing because it's a venue uh, standing. So people yeah. don't want to stand around they want to sit down. So um, Tomcat doesn't have any seats, mind you, but it's such a small venue and it's marketed as a bar with a stage rather than a venue that people go there and yeah. they love it. It's it's a vibe. It's one of those things you just have to be there in the room to feel what I'm talking about. But because the other venues are marketed as venues, they don't have seats. You wouldn't go there for a drink. You would go there for a band and a lot of the other pubs and bars and whatever in that area they have seating. So you would go and sit down with your mates and have a drink. So yeah. it's, it's one of those things where, like I was saying, no one comes in off the street. Um, mm. You're not going to get any randoms coming in and accidentally being like, Oh, I've stumbled upon this great band. It just doesn't happen. Um, so Brisbane's a tough one. It's a tough one. You, you gotta, you gotta know the right people rather than mm, randoms coming in off the street well you just touched on something that i was thinking about that you know the idea of knowing the right people well you know you would know the scene well so i mean like yeah, wow. you know you can like you have something to offer as well like a bit of a trade-off you know with bands in sydney it's kind of like hey guys like um you know i'm interested in playing in sydney da 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 how do i do this you know what's the you know you just get in touch and you know give us give phone calls and whatever. And it's like, you know, and then the same thing when, you know, it's like, if you ever want to do Brizzy, it's like, I have, this is, this is, I know I can show you, you know, how to, where to go and where not to go. Yeah. You know, and like work like that. I'm so, and I imagine like, that's what happens like with the bigger guys, like they, you know, they're showing the, you know, the Sydney guys, the ropes and the same thing for, you know, big bands up in Queensland. Is that how you reckon of how it goes? Oh, it, it I don't think the bands at a certain level would communicate it with each other. It'd be more of management um, yeah. being like, you know, are they a good fit for the person that I'm managing? If not, then they're not playing. Um, you know, can they bring a crowd? A lot of, a lot of what dictates who plays with who is, can they bring a crowd rather than are they good? Um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of bands in my time that have brought a huge crowd and not even just personally, like, from a perspective of just not being judgmental, like just critically they were bad, but they brought a huge crowd and you're like, how do people listen to this? But they do. Um, and they brought a crowd. So here they are. And you know, that's, that's always blown my mind a little bit when you go and see a band and they've got a full room and it's just, awesome. how did you get there? <laughs> I have a lot of friends. I, I, I reckon. Or yeah. Just, I, <laughs> That's that's the or tough, a lot of family. That's the tough part. I did not go to uh, a private school. Uh, well, yeah. I did in a way, but it was very very small. And I was the kind of kid that liked to stay in the recording studio yeah. by myself and work alone on my music. So yeah. I didn't really come out of school with a huge friend group. I came out with a lot of songs, <laughs> um, but not a lot of friends. Uh, which you know in my personal life is fantastic, but yeah. in my music life, not so much because I don't have a whole heap of people that I can bring to gigs. Yeah. Which, which, which I don't think, I don't think, you know, it should be the responsibility of the artist, especially, you know, if you're in a starting position to bring people to the gigs, like, you know, like the best gigs, like the best venues in Sydney are always the ones that it's like, people are here, it's happening. And it's like, these people are playing, you know, like the, and um, I, 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 I hate it when, like, when, when venues and, you know, pubs or, you know, clubs, whatever you want to call it, get the, the model wrong, where it's kind of like, if you have a good, you know, if you have a good, um, you know, venue, 
it and you know you kind of it doesn't really matter who you have who's playing you know it you know you'll always have people coming you know yeah you can figure that that mystery out and um and always those venues seem to last the longest it doesn't happen up here the the venue places all of that on you like the amount of gigs i've gone to where there's just no one there and you're like it's it's hard to watch man because like the bands give it their all but there's just no one there yeah what about what about the gold coast have you been up there I've played a couple gigs on the Gold Coast, nothing, nothing special, but yeah. like even with Gold Coast bands that played, there's just no one there. Um, you know, like it's like no one knows about them. Yeah. Then you all the gig, like, and that also comes down to, I've found a lot of times completely on a tangent. I've found that I will message followers of my page and say, Hey, did you see the new song? And they're like, no. And you're like, I've been posting about it for the past month, every single day. Like you haven't seen it. They're like, no, I didn't even see any of your posts. And you're like, okay, yeah, cool. So Instagram and Facebook basically like, unless you're paying, hold you back. I'm like followers of my own page. Haven't even seen the stuff I've been posting. Yeah. That that's, that's so wrong like i've noticed that with facebook you know especially facebook i think instagram is a bit more lenient but I, that's why i was kind of getting at tiktok before you know with you yeah. because like i thought tiktok was a you know just a joke i thought tiktok was just like this thing that wasn't going to last but the brilliant thing about tiktok is you don't have to pay to to have it seen by people it's kind of like just make a funny video or make a video that's interesting and, you know, a little bit clickbaity and chuck a bunch of hashtags on it. And you wake up the next day and you're like, holy, you know, holy shit, 800 people saw this, a thousand people saw this, 500 yeah. people saw it. Where Facebook's like, all right, you may have a thousand followers, but you know, it's only going to be seen by 50 people. It's like, how does that make any, any logical sense? And it, it should, every time you post something, it should go to every single follower. Like, oh, abs absolutely. How does, that, yeah. how does that not make sense? I know why they do it, but they shouldn't do it. No, they should never have been allowed to do that. Like when they used to not do that, it was brilliant. It was like, okay, like you could, you know, say you put this on your page and you know, all your people see it and more. And, um, Instagram still, still a bit like that. I don't think Instagram's quite as stingy as Facebook, even though they're owned by the same company. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, I, that, that's why I brought up. Have you done much experimentation with TikTok? Like you said, a few. No, I starting next year. I'm going to get into TikTok. I'm going to get into YouTube. I really wanted to, for personal reasons, wanted to focus on my singing. You know, I do believe at my current stage I am a great singer, but. I just couldn't cover songs in the correct key yeah. I, and I didn't want to key them down because that takes away in my personal opinion, a bit of character from what the song was. So I wanted to be able to sing them in the correct key and sing them well. Um, so starting next year when I'm a little bit more accomplished in my singing, but that's, that's your, a big that, thing. you know, that's, that's your TikTok there, man. Like is, is, is you just showing, you know, like, um, you know, when you're, you know, when you're trying to, you know, get, you know, um, you're singing to thing or when you, when it's not quite right, or, you know, like show the, show the process, like a, a lot of like the music TikToks and what, you know, when, when we started the West underground thing, it's like, they don't want to see the best moments of you talking or doing well. It's kind of like, you know, you, they want, they want to see the, 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 the funny things, the things that have gone wrong and, yeah. and, you know, the, and see the see the struggle and the like the human side of it because it, it, you know like when you when you package something that's you know all all nice and polished um you know i feel like it it, it almost seems unachievable for like lots of people because you know there's so much effort and hard work that's gone into it but when you post the fuck ups they seem to be the best ones that you know <laughs> seem to yeah. get the most you know most views and most attention for you know is you you being stupid or goofy or or silly and i and i would like if i could you know say anything to you man it'd be like get on the tiktok now like and, and yeah. make the make the most of it and just fucking put up you know like the, the 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 stupid shit that you don't think twice about but it's like you know this would be you know interesting or you know goofy or funny to to somebody else and also like show like you know videos of you 
trying and also then getting there to where you're, you know, where you're, where you're feeling comfortable. And it's like, oh, well, we can see the journey and the fucking effort and <laughs> everything. And yeah, but um, I think that's like the interesting thing about TikTok is like you put up videos that you think are like really good. And then it's like they, they do sh- shit and you throw the ones that you put together in five minutes where you've been a fucking idiot. And they're the ones that do the best. And it's like, I can't get this right. That happens all the time. Like some of the posts I've done where I'm like, this is fantastic. Just go nowhere. And you're like, come on, man. And you post something and you're like, oh, shit, I'm late for something. I'm just going to post something. And you post it and like 200 likes. And you're like, how does that work? It was awful. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's like the, 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 like, I don't know, the human spirit in it, you know, people, people just like, and I think it's relatable too. If you fuck up or you, or something silly, it's, it's, it's funny. And that's like a, you know, like a, you know, if you make someone laugh, then they're going to instantly remember you as well. And also like, yeah. if, you know, if you, if you, if it's not perfect or it's a little bit fucked, you know, people can be like, oh yeah. You know, like somehow relate to it more. I feel like and sometimes when you're like, this is the best thing I've ever done. And it gets, you know, you know, like not, not as well received as what you, what you anticipate. Yeah. It's exactly, as you said, it is a monopoly. There's no other radio station that controls the music in Australia. It's all triple J. Um, and you know, I don't focus on what triple J want at all. I focus on what I want and if they happen to like what I like, fantastic. But it's, it's one of those things where I write all the music for what I would want to hear. What makes me happy when I hear a song? What makes me feel a certain way when I listen to the music that I listen to? And I write my music so that I can help other people feel what I feel when I'm listening to the music that I make. And I I love what I write. I think it's fantastic. And, you know, just because some big wigs don't agree with me, you know, like I think they're a little bit tainted by ego to see a lot of the good music. There's a lot of bands that I'm friends with in Brisbane that should be famous that aren't. Um, and it, it blows my mind that they're stuck here and they're not doing a lot better than they should be. There's so many bands that I am friends with that I've heard and I'm blown about, blown away with how fantastic they are. And they've just been stale for yeah. years because no one wants to touch them. And I, I don't get it. Well, that was, that was the whole reason we started doing this podcast is, is one, because we, you know, COVID happened the first time and, you know, we had time to do it, but we'd been talking about it for so long too. And it's like, if there was, you know, alternative means of, you know, um, of, of, you know, of, of Triple J, I mean, like, you know, you kind of build a following, like, you know, only option with, with outside music. of Triple J is to leave Australia. Basically. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And then and then you're kind of damned if you do that as 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 well because now you're starting from ground zero and um you know uh it wouldn't be any different honestly like it's it's one of those things where you either make it or you don't like there really is no in between uh you kind of just like a lot of the best bands that have come out of Australia have made it outside of Australia and then come back to Australia and have made a name here because they have a name elsewhere like you read a lot of stories because triple j has been around for quite a while yeah you read a lot of stories of bands that were just not given the time of day and went screw it they went to the uk they went to america hit it massive came back and triple j goes oh yeah we love you now and they're like no piss off we don't want anything to do with you because you did not give us any kind of faith that we could make it and we've we've shown you and they did their own thing and they've had huge careers uh, that had nothing to do with Triple J. And that's kind of what I aspire to do. I, or I want to go to the UK actually next year if international travel opens up. The music I write is very UK based. The bands I listen to are very UK based. And I want to go over there and just test my luck, you know, start anew basically and see if I can create a name for myself over there and then bring it back here once I've got a name. Hey, Paul, do you know if the Stoke Travel Competition still runs? No, I'm not too sure, man. I haven't heard of it for a while now because of no travel. Yeah. Oh, one, one thing that you, would, you might want to have a look at, man, is there's a magazine um, com- like company and they're called Stoke Magazine and they run this competition every year. It's like Battle of the Bands, but if you win, they send you yeah. to play festivals in Europe and all around the, 
um, you know, all around, all around Europe and you get to play, um, you know, like fucking amazing, you know, the stages and, you know, people that we've talked to on the channel and stuff that have gone and done it have come back and, you know, got, got management and also been able to play stages with, um, you know, in bit festivals overseas and just come back with all the connections under the sun and, and I, you know, if, if have a look into if they're going to run that for 2022, because, you know, it, that, that is a competition that really runs off, you know, how good you are. Like they're, they're choosing you off, you know, how well you, you know, you entertain the room and, you know, and got the crowd on your side, basically. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I've played quite an, a, a few band competitions in my time. And the thing that gets me every single time is it's not about how good you are. It's about how many drinks you can sell, um, which I don't know if you've done that yourself or if you've had friends that have had similar experiences. Uh, I've had I've had judges come up to me and say, "Oh, just letting you know that you would have won, but that person sold more drinks," and it, it's infuriating. Oh man, that's bullshit. Come down and do this one. This is this is the, this is the real deal one where they'll send you over to Europe and pay for the you know the whole whole trip. And Certainly, the, when's it on? Send me a link. Uh, I, I'll I'll send you. I'll send also you know we'll we'll link you up with you know some you know great guys that that have that have yeah. actually done it and you can see what they what they've done on the other you know on the on the other side of the world basically and it, and it's yeah. amazing and I think that's one of those true competitions where it's not fucking rigged. Like yes. the, the guys we interviewed, um, wicked things that actually won the competition. I think the last time they did it, they entered the competition going, fuck, this is rigged and, 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 and then won it, you know, <laughs> and then were, you know, sent out and, you know, have, you know, now come now in Australia and Sydney and, a you know, in a shit position, but are just ready to go once it, you know, once it all yeah. kind of opens up again and it's, and and uh, we interviewed another band, Honey Hayes, that had won it the year, like at the year before. And the same thing, they just kind of had this, you know, and also came back to Sydney and it's like doing, doing bigger shows, doing this, but also like having, you know, like now contacts to really take yeah. it up to the next level. And um, yeah, and, I, and I, I see what you say about like the Australian bands too, like ACDC, I suppose, did that, you know, kind of made a bit of a name over here and pissed off. And the same with the Bee Gees that are, are from Queensland and like, yeah. um, you know, everyone and, you know, all the, all the really big names, you know, in excess as well, you know, that was kind of their strategy. But yeah, you know, I just think keep going, man. Just don't give up. Don't feel disheartened by, you know, the, the situation in Brisbane. Just keep hustling. And, yeah, some days you wake up and you're like, why do I do this? But, you know, I, I used to be under the impression, I'm like, oh, I'm 25 and I haven't made it. Like, what am I going to do? And then you kind of, you kind of realize and you look at all your favorite artists and you're like, oh, they only started to make it when they were like 28, 29, 30. Yeah. Like I've still got time. Like, and even if I hit 30, like there's still time. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I don't it's one of those that. things where I'm not worried about all that kind of stuff. I do my best and, you know, you just hope that people see the hard work you put in and want to give you the help that you need because that's it. Like I've said it several times through, you can only do so much. It's up to people in higher positions than you to really give you that shot. Yeah. And you just hope that they see it. Yeah. You see the hard work, you know, that's, that's all you can do. I reckon we should wrap up the interview here. I think that's a great place to end on one with hard yeah. work. You know? Hard work. Yeah, you took my question. You just answered my question. So that's a good thing. Nice. <laughs> yeah, good on you. I was going to ask you about um, what keeps you focused, but you just answered that one and also gave a good advice to young younger generations as well to never good. stop trying and always be focused. Hard work. So that's I'll, a I'll, I'll answer that very quickly. Hard yeah. work. And the thing that keeps me going is uh, spite. <laughs> yeah and, and it's obvious it's obvious that you do do a lot of hard work and keep yourself focused so i applaud you for that yeah jokes aside i just love music and songwriting and that's what keeps me going it's a hobby that i genuinely love and if it turns into a career that's that's what i'm hoping for thank you so much for coming on man thank you so much for having me guys i really really appreciate it it's been an awesome chat